Welcome to a new video where I want to do a camera review on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And can this entry-level mid-range device compete with flagship devices? It has at least a 108 megapixel flagship worthy camera sensor and I want to check it out in this video if it is good for photos and videos as well as the 8 megapixel ultra-wide angle camera. So let's get started. We start this video off with the selfie camera on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and Full HD 30 frames per second and I'm going downhill and uh, let's see how good the stabilization is working on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and I have my microphone attached as you can see here it's windy so probably you can hear some wind noise let me just turn around because it's too much even for the wind muff for the little dead cat to handle so this is the front-facing uh, camera video of the redmi note 10 pro and uh, yeah tell me what you think about the stabilization and if yeah audio quality is also good enough with my ceremonic uh, microphone wired microphone because you have a headphone jack where you can just plug in the microphone and then use that for recording at least i hope the xiaomi software is still able to do this so let's try out the main camera sensor on the back how good is stabilization and how good is the image and the blur the background blur that you get i think the sensor is a little bit bigger on the redmi note 10 pro than on my sony that i filmed the intro with so uh, one over 1.7 inch is the sony one and this one here the i think it's gn1 from samsung on the redmi note 10 pro is one over one five one over 1.5 inch so it's a bigger sensor it's basically the same size of sensor as in my mate 30 pro that also has in the wide angle at least the one over 1.5 inch sensor but the difference is that this one is a much more narrower than the one on the mate 30 pro and i think this sensor is working fine if you have a selfie stick like i have here it can work pretty good and you don't need a smaller sized vlogging camera or something like this because this camera sensor is that good also dynamic range is good the sun in the background as you can see here it should still expose just my face fine and autofocus should also work just fine I can show you my uh, Sony Xperia uh, 1 Mark II device and the stuff that I filmed on there you can see it should also yeah uh, just simply focus on this so focusing should also work pretty fine and good and yet uh, yeah I think I will switch to the ultra wide 8 megapixels to see if there's a big difference in terms of quality and of course field of view so now I'm on the ultra wide camera lens the 8 megapixel camera lens and uh, this one is also pretty fine pretty wide as well so you can see a lot of things here around me but I think dynamic range is a bit worse the uh, sun is in the background again let's try focusing so I have my phone here is it focusing on this can I get closer to this and how's the back I'm not sure if it has focusing even uh, this might be one thing that of course I would expect on a mid-range device not to have only high class premium devices have a ultra wide angle camera that has the ability to focus as well so have an autofocus not a fixed focus of course focusing is there as well hopefully uh, yeah this is uh, basically everything for this uh, ultra wide angle camera test and um, of course you have also the possibility to zoom in during video recording i guess at least this is what i will try out and then i will take some photos and show you this as well so let's get started so let's try again the ultra wide angle camera sensor we are going here to this little pond and uh, yeah we will try to take a nice little snap as well as uh, having some zoom tests so i have now the possibility from this ultra wide angle to zoom in so i can zoom in slowly here to one times roughly and i don't see it changing the camera which is a bit odd maybe it's kicking in a little bit later so let's try to get one of the uh, birds there 
to see what are those birds. Can I zoom in? I can only zoom in two times and I think it is cropping into the ultra wide angle lens. It's not really using the main camera sensor. Let's stop this and uh, go to the main sensor. So now I'm on the main sensor. Let's see how much I can zoom in here. So here I can zoom in further as you can see here six times already. Can not zoom in anymore and it gets pretty pixelated because it doesn't have a telephoto camera sensor so it's only cropping into the main sensor but the ultra wide is a bit disappointing because it just yeah is cropping in it is not using any lens switch when i zoom into the ultra wide angle lens So, sometimes if you take a photo like the one in the 8 megapixel, it can take a second not to only take the shot, but also to load the image. Let's go quickly through the camera application of MIUI or the Redmi Note 10 Pro. So I have here my uh, usual setup of little uh, gadgets that I want to photograph and show you how this works. So we have the normal photo mode and if I want to take a snap, you can see it is pretty quickly in taking the snap even in darker situations. I can click to focus. It will also change the uh, the white balance, the uh, uh, and the um, brightness of the image itself and you can take a snap. You have an AI mode that you can turn off and on and when it's on it boosts a little bit the colors and makes it a little bit yeah, better looking. Here's some other options here just like for example different filters that you can turn on and you can switch to vivid, gold, lime and so on various different filters. You have HDR that you can turn on or off and automatically is the default. Then you have the Google Lens here and you have the flash of course that you can turn on and you have some other settings here just like setting the uh, format, the aspect ratio and if you want to have a timer, if you have, want to have grid lines, if you want to go to settings, movie frame option which will go give you like the 60, uh, 21 by 9 kind of movie frame. You can go into super macro mode and I didn't show you super macro mode photo so let's do this here. The super macro mode allows you to get very close to your objects, very very close as you can see here, even closer if I want to. This is the maximum we can go. It has autofocus as well and it's pretty good. Let's take a snap and I can show you the snap as well. It's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, this super macro mode, it's 5 megapixels so it is not as bad as yeah, all the other cheap uh, macro cameras that you usually get.
we have a time shift or tilt shift function that gives you like this kind of look I'm not sure if this is really wanted a miniaturizing look that in this case might be interesting to see and you can see the AI detected it as a food which is not really the case with some other options here we can turn off different tilt chip options just like this miniaturizing effect or the round miniaturizing effect I think the round one makes more sense on this object then we have a uh, timed burst as well where we have a uh, five second burst that can be made this is of course for moving subjects and yeah this is basically the photo options that you have then we have a normal portrait mode so if you want to take portraits you have the option to set the aperture up or down to get the effect that you want and you have the more option where I showed you already the short video the vlog mode dual video allows me to record myself here and the other side um, might be handy as well sometimes I didn't try it out uh, when I was doing my vlog and we have the uh, option to edit this menu which is pretty cool so I can add my own menu to the uh, overview so if I want to have like night mode directly in the overview not under the more section I can edit this here which is pretty nice and handy otherwise I have the 108 megapixel mode documents if I want to photograph documents time lapse that I showed you as well the clone mode is a nice little mode that allows me to take photos of myself in multiple positions and it clones myself then it also works as uh, video as well which is pretty nice and uh, the night mode which allows me to take night shots and uh, I will show you some night shots as well then we have a panorama mode which allows you to take some nice panoramas here's an example of a panorama and we have a slow motion mode as well that allows uh, you to take a slow motions and the long exposure mode which is also available which allows you to do some moving crowd neon trails uh, oil painting light painting and all those little options that are possible with long exposures these are basically all the extra modes but you can have like some uh, oops you have the option to download maybe some others or set some others up I think there was one I think the vlog one I downloaded extra which was not by default on the device itself then we have the video mode where I can choose between the different uh, modes you can see here the color shift and the wide angle um, camera and the two times zoom which is basically no color shift at all it's a crop into the sensor itself so I can just start recording here I have some options here as well like setting up the resolution 720 uh, 1080p 30 frames per second 1080p 60 frames per second and 4k 30 frames per second which doesn't have any stabilization though and yeah movie frame I can turn on and I can also film in super macro mode if I want to film something in super macro mode this looks basically like this and you can see I have the option to zoom in even further uh, in this case it is not really sharp is it there have it so I have also the possibility to have this I cannot zoom out though so super macro mode filming also pretty interesting as I think then we have the pro mode the pro mode allows me to not to only take photos with a different white balance a different f-stop number which is pretty interesting it's simulating the f-stop number though uh, I have the option to set my shutter speed the ISO uh, exposure compensation and I can switch the lens from wide to ultra wide for example or to macro mode if I want to which is also pretty nice and I have the option to switch to macro mode here I can go into video filming mode so where I have like uh, also the option to switch to the macro mode again I have the option to set the aperture which is pretty nice is it the aperture actually it's not the aperture I think it's focusing so the f here is not the aperture it's focusing so I can set up the focusing up here the way I want it pretty nice shutter speed is again very important for filming in manual mode so if you want to film something cinematic set it to 150 or 160 ISO exposure compensation and again I can choose the lens and I can reset everything if I did something wrong and of course I have the option also to change uh, the uh, metering mode here spot metering frame average metering 
and uh, yeah, here's the spot metering right now, or the center weighted, and I can set uh, different color vibes or color profiles as well here. And of course, I have the option to film uh, 720p 30 frames per second, 1080p 30, and so on. The same options here, but with another extra option like the log option so i can film in log which is pretty nice if i want to edit it later on it doesn't make sense for 8-bit log so much i would say but still it is there and also I have focus peaking which is a professional thing so if we go here and when i change focus you can see we get the f this fucking uh, this red outline that shows me what is in focus pretty handy especially if you want to do some cinematic shots so turn this on in pro mode and the same goes for uh, the option to focus verification uh, so if you focus on something you get a nice verification is it focus verification or is it exposure verification i think it's exposure verification which has a zebras turned on what i don't like is the option that i can only have either uh, zebras for right exposure or the focus speaking so it would be nice if i have the option to turn both on because i like to have both on so pretty professional um, settings here in the xiaomi camera application i really like that if you go to settings now we have some other options here as well so we have the option to allow tagging in videos image stabilization is turned on we can have a histogram if you like to we have live in-ear monitoring, which is also in professional mode. If you have the headphones inside, you can listen to your audio, which is also pretty nice. We can set the video encoder to H.265. If we want to, we can have the option for the volume buttons to act as a shutter button. Also pretty handy. And we have some other options here, like the customization options for the feature layout, where I have, again, the option to put everything in this little slider. Uh, that I want to the camera modes I can set up here like I want to have a more panel or a more tab and I have the option to change the colors as well here if I want to change colors here uh, for the highlight and so on so pretty much customization uh, possibilities here save the location and having a shutter sound is also possible here save the previous mode so that every time i open up the camera it is going into this mode it's also very handy especially if you have set up some uh, custom settings and uh, the professional mode for video for example and we have anti-bending features here is 50 hertz we can set to auto or off and this is basically everything in the camera settings. I like this camera pretty much because it gives me the option of professional camera uh, shooting even with this mid-range device and the pro mode for video is really really top-notch and uh, Huawei and Sony should take a look at this camera app which is pretty pretty awesome in terms of uh, the pro mode. So what do you think about the Redmi Note 10 Pro? Is it a good device? Is it good for video? Is it good in terms of features? Is the main camera good enough without the ability to zoom in? Which is I think a big issue for this device. How is the ultra wide angle? I think my personal opinion the main camera sensor is really top notch it is the best that you can get in a mid-range currently it is not maybe like the premium high quality that you can get from today's kind of smartphones but it is last year's premium kind of sensor so you get premium kind of photos one of the best photos in a mid-ranger currently the ultra wide angle is nothing spectacular or special you have a bit of better dynamic range than I would have expected with the ultra wide angle, but in general, I think it is a typical mid range device. But when you have in mind that this device only costs around 250 to 280 euros, it is very, very good what you get for your money. It is the bang for the buck that it's like unimaginable one year ago where we had also good mid-range devices but they started in this 300 to 350 to 380 uh, kind of uh, price range so i'm pretty 
impressed with the Redmi Note 10 Pro and I could imagine using this for vlogging for example like I'm doing right now because it has the ability to directly record audio and uh, the camera sensor the main at least is wonderfully for this and even the ultra wide has such a wide uh, field of view that it might be handy sometimes in general I'm very impressed with the Redmi Note uh, 8 uh, Note 8 no 10 Pro device and uh, what do you think should I take some more shots? Do you want more camera samples? Do you want a comparison with, for example, my Sony Xperia 1 Mark II? Or do you want a camera comparison with the Mate 30 Pro, which is a flagship device from uh, over a year ago? Um, just write it down in the comment section. What do you think about the Redmi Note 10 Pro? And what do you want me to test with the cameras of the Redmi Note 10 Pro? That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe and write down in the comment section and until the next time bye